Hey everyone, Waterbot here, and welcome to Mini Shoot Adventure. It is a uh, shoot 'em up, or like bullet hell, Metroidvania. But unlike, oh, what was the other one I played? Arc Veil. Your world has fallen. Red roads are ro roaming, and your friends are crystallized. Time to wake up. Ooh, I like the art style for this one. I played something like this recently called Arc Veil that was pretty good. Oh, the, this works based on, like, ship controls. Oh, this is gonna be spicy. It doesn't look like I can shoot at anything yet. Can I bump into that? No, I can do nothing. Okay. That's neat. And here's gun. So, yeah, kind of Nova Drift movement, kind of not. Um. It's. It's not Nova Drift movement. But it's. Oh, oh. Okay, now I can. Now I can. Um. There's a little bit of momentum to it, I guess would be the way of putting it. You know, normally when you're playing a game, when you control a character, you tell them to go left, they go left. You tell them to go right, they go right. Uh, this character has to turn around before you can do so. It throws it off a little bit and gives it a bit of a momentum system instead. Uh, not as much inertia as as Nova Drift. That's completely different. Honestly, I actually kind of wish Nova Drift moved like this, but I realized that it would make the game too easy and also complete completely break the balance of the game. Oh, there's another one of these dudes. Where did you even come from? Come back, I must murder you. Because whatever these little crystal bits are, they've got to give me something good, maybe. Just like a turn rate? I don't know. You'd have to play this to see. It's not too bad. It's just an odd, uh, slight inertia to the movement. Eh, it's not even inertia. There's my range. Not nearly long enough to hit that thing. There we go. I kind of... This framing around the screen is throwing me off a little bit. It's just like, just distracting enough. Throw me off. Oh, he's predicting my, my movement. I mean, hardly a problem. All I have to do is just bit back and forth and then he can do nothing to me, but still. I do like the framing though. It, it does actually kind of have that feeling of like, yeah, you're in a boss arena now or fight arena. So that's something to keep in mind. What is this? Oh! So I get a, an upgrade. So bullet damage, fire rate, crit chance, bullet speed, move speed, fire rate, and then looks like there's some other stuff that I don't have. And I can upgrade and downgrade. Let's just go... Fire range? How much range is that? Not much. I like the fact that I can change this on the fly. We'll do fire rate for the time being. Okay. And yeah, the map is in progress, so I can't rely on it. Or can I? No. The map, su map system is under construction, which is a bit of a shame that we have a, a friendship. Okay. It looks like it got kind of bunged up here. Oh, it's a shopkeeper. So weapon level two, and then... Probably three, four, and five or something like that. We'll see. Let's see if I find anything useful. Another crystal. Oh, that's a heart piece. Okay, that makes sense. Well, this is neat. And those are bombable from the other side. Can't get through to that. Or maybe I can. No, I gotta be like heavy or something. I have no way of going faster, but that's okay. I like this. I've been playing a lot of Metroidvanias over the years, especially ever since Hollow Knight, which I... It's got to be like my first. It doesn't feel like it. Oh, hello. But so, ever since Hollow Knight, the Metroidvania genre has been really kind of like a... I don't even want to say it's a guilty pleasure, but, you know, I will go out of my way to try ones. Especially ones that have, like, really interesting ideas. Uh, that can be expressed 
uh, through different formats. I know a lot of people will go like full purist and say like, no, uh, Metroidvania has to be like a, a Castlevania style like platformer or, you know, Metroid style platformer. It's got to be like either one of those. And then anything beyond that is just unacceptable. I don't like that kind of logic though, because there's so much potential for something interesting. Though, there is some question of like, is it going to be a Metroidvania or is it going to be more of like a Zelda-like? And you never quite know. Because the two of those are almost identical, but also equally different, oftentimes due to kind of... You don't really backtrack as much in Zelda games is the real answer. Blasphemous is an amazing game. It is! I got stuck on the, uh, uh, the, like, really windy cliff area that I would, like, try and make the jump and then fail and have to do the entire damn thing again. I just got kind of sick of it. I gotta go back and give it a shot again. What's another pseudo-Metroidvania? I guess it wasn't exactly a Metroidvania, but there was the... One of those guys just... fell into the void. Works for me. Uh, what was it? Nobody Saves the World. That was another game that came out kind of recently that I'd love to put some time back into. Because it, it follows a lot of the same logic where you find interesting power-ups that allow you to access di different parts of the world. And you have this just big interconnected map to explore. I find a lot of games don't actually really do the interconnected map particularly well. Now, I've been playing um, Horizon Forbidden West recently. And it, it's a very, very competent... Uh, open world game, but I find myself kind of wishing there were some areas that were a little bit more labyrinthine. Uh, because the game honestly plays like an old school CRPG, but the levels are just so open that it's... Okay. I have to get behind this sucker. I am fighting a giant Roomba. I was gonna say, I wish there was a, a visual indicator for how much damage it's taken, but there actually is. It's color. I was kind of hoping the core would clear out. Though, there's some currency. Yeah, Zelda has backtracking on the overworld, but every dungeon is basically a, a mini Metroidvania. Yeah. I feel like you could fuse the two ideas maybe a little bit further together. And actually have something quite spicy. Because I, I would love a... Uh, I would love a, a Zelda game. Where, oh, right, I have another one of these. Uh, let's see, crit chance, bullet speed, bullet damage. Let's actually just go for bullet damage. Uh, I would love a, a, a Zelda game where it's just one giant dungeon. Uh, honestly, kind of close to what uh, Darksiders 3 was, where it was this large interconnected area. Let's see, fire rate, there we go. With a, oh boy. Oh, wait, no. There we go. Where there's a lot of things to do and explore, but there's no, like, firm division between areas in most cases. There was. Like, you could definitely tell which biome you were in. But it wasn't... Okay, can't get to that. Can't go there. That's eh, fine. Ugh. But I, I'd love to see Nintendo tackle that kind of map design with their own, um, with their own, like, skill, talents, and, I mean, considerable experience with level design. Because, I, I don't know, I feel like level design is kind of one of those weird things that's dropped off a little bit. You know, you have these, like, really long hallway design kind of games. Uh, or these, like, really long hallway games, and then these these very, like, giant open worlds things where the levels are kind of neat, but it's all just a bunch of limited arenas. I'd like to mention my favorite Metroid fun fact that Gunpei Yokoi's task in his creation was to make a 2D Zelda. Oh, you mean for, uh, for, like, Metroid and Super Metroid? I mean, it makes sense. I just always love how, like, Metroidvanias have you go back to, a, like, a very early area and then you find, like, oh, shit, there's this whole thing here. Um, 
You know, this, this whole new area that I haven't seen before. And it's something completely different. Okay, this is a concern. Uh, dim some big guns, but they don't actually have that much range. There we go. We are getting plenty of coinage. But unfortunately, I don't know where I'm going. So I'm just going to keep grabbing stuff. What Doom level design. It feels very wild, but also very calculated. Doom level design is incredibly... I, I would say Doom 2016 better than Doom Eternal. Doom Eternal's level design suffered a little bit by the fact that they added so much extra verticality that uh, by giving players too much mobility, it was harder to design around, so they kind of went back on the bigger arena design. It was fun to go around, but it definitely didn't feel like it had quite as much character. I can now boost. Boost. Let's see. Death Door is basically four Zelda-like dungeons. Only watched it. Yep. Yeah, Death, Death Door follows a lot of uh, basic Zelda conventions. And does so particularly well, honestly. Like Death, Death Door is one of my favorite games out of last year. Those purple flames are spooky, and I kind of want to leave it for later. Oh, you can see how much uh, boost meter I have left. I kind of wish I had uh, limited boost meter outside of combat, though. Oh, no, I have no choice. I have to be here. Purple flames are bust. Ow. 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 Okay, here we go. I don't think that heals me. I actually have no idea how I even heal here. But it's fine. Can we boost over water? Nope. Immediately just fall in. Okay. So fire rate is even more. Movement speed, bullet speed, critical chance. Probably grab a little bit of movement speed. Me being zippy seems like a good idea. Especially for dodging. Yeah, I could go to the purple door, but I don't think I want to do that yet. Especially because I'm pretty sure... Where is this? I don't know. I was back at the beginning. We know that much. Okay. Buy weapon level 2. Weapon level 3 is pretty expensive. Oh, but I have the double shot now. Yeah. Okay, so that's the purple door for the boss. Let's see what else I can do. I also have no idea how to heal. Uh, can I get to the upside? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I can't kill these guys. There we go. Wow. Okay, that makes a difference. Do I want to go there? Here, let's open this up at the very least. Yeah, there's like a barrel barrel there? A big big rock there. I don't know. Boulder. I can word. Okay, I think I've already done this. Did I get this one? No. Yeah, I'm still not quite sold on how I heal in this. Hopefully somehow. I was really hoping I'd heal by leveling up at the very least. But maybe there's some other way to do it. Or I just heal when I'm dead. Okay, there we go. Oh, one of those healed me. I guess it's just based off of enemy kills. Another hip part, and then there's that on the other side, but I can't do it. Is it the legend of the small spaceship? Yeah, kinda. Okay. Have I been down here? Unfortunately, with no map to guide me, I'm gonna be wandering a little bit too much. Having big boosts goes a long way for getting around, though. Especially with a little bit of extra movement speed. Just want to see if there's anything else I've missed before I just tackle a boss.
done this? Yeah, I've done this. I, I definitely would say when this uh when this comes out, having that map is gonna go so far. I wish I wish they had a rudimentary one at the very least for the demo. Just because playing these games, especially without a whole lot of uh immediately standout landmarks, you know, it's just a lot of these these kind of yellow orange rocks and not a whole lot else. Uh it makes it very easy to get a little I don't wanna say turned around. Have we done that? Can't do that. And have not been here. There we go. I think purple is the end. Yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to put that off for as long as possible just because then the demo ends and then I'm done. Which, you know, not against ending this, but I've only been recording for about 15 minutes. And it's kind of a shame to to play a demo for 15 minutes. I usually like putting about I don't know. I think for me the perfect is like 30 minutes to 45. Or really get a good feeling for the game what it is. Uh, you know, it's it's various unique features and whatnot. Okay, cannot break rock. Can I go here? We've done that, but we can't do anything with it. Okay, and I'm pretty sure I've been all the way over here. Yeah. I might have to fight the boss. Because it doesn't look like there's anything left. A lot of boulders, a lot of things to do. Just nothing I have access to at the moment. Okay, it was up here. Onwards. Might have been a secret somewhere. Oh, unless this is a... Oh, it's a dungeon. Okay, that's... That's more. That's better. So we were just in the overworld area. This is the first actual dungeon. Well, the nice part is because I've already I've already got the level 2 weapon, I pretty much just shred the basic dudes. There we go. Just got to be so careful. And then just kind of shred my way through. So, I'm not sure if this is going to be a full Metroidvania, or my assumption is this is actually a, a, a Zelda-like. Which, once again, I said they are kind of near identical in a lot of ways. Let's get the extra fire range while we're here. But yeah, some extra range means I can fling things from relative safety. There we go. But... So we have the bigger overworld area, then the more instance dungeons uh, with kind of their own exploratory map. Boss keys and a bunch of other things. There we go. Uh, let's see. Let's go back. Honestly, frankly, if you were to say it's one and then it, you're wrong and it's the other, I'm still not going to matter. All right, I'm, just, I'm not going to mind. Because fundamentally, both... Both offer that really satisfying feeling of exploration that, like I said, is kind of missing from a lot of, uh, a lot of other games that I love. The only other games that I can think of that do exploration particularly well are generally the Soulsborne games. I mean, go figure, because they're intentionally supposed to be 3D Metroidvanias to some degree. Um, though... I don't know. I think it depends on the the Soulsborne. I don't remember Dark Souls 3 having quite as uh, solid of level design. It was really just the first half of Dark Souls 1 that did it really well. And then like Sekiro. Sekiro did it incredibly well, despite the fact that it had heavy verticality. Which is usually incredibly hard to balance around. I'm curious about how Elden Ring is going to go. Let's see, will this have meta prog pro yeah, meta progress? Probably not. Meta progression is usually something that is heavily uh heavily limited to roguelikes. And this is very much not one. Let's see, are you gonna be playing Elden Ring? Yeah? Uh so I'm gonna be playing Elden Ring. I don't know if I'm gonna be streaming it though. 
is the answer. Uh, historically, whenever I stream Souls Likes, it usually goes over like a lead balloon. And honestly, at this point, uh, from like a channel perspective, I feel like I'm heavily, I'm heavily uh, specialized towards indie games more so than um, than anything from software is made over the last couple of years. Like, don't get me wrong, I'd love to be able to play whatever I want and actually, you know, be fine uh, doing it, but I know for, like, a, a Soulsborne game, you have to be playing it for quite some time. Hmm. Yeah, I can't go through either of those. Oh, how did I miss this stuff? I have no idea. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Uh, let's go see what's up here. Because I've got to be able to cross the gaps. May maybe. No, I can't do anything with that. Huh. There's more to this than I thought. Let's just delete these guys. Uh, let's see. Wonder. Are you... St uh, what was that? Do you think you're still looking for your breakout game? Oh, like as a content creator? Honestly, I don't think... I, I, I think it's... I don't want to say it's too late for that. Uh, but I've had a number of those over the years. The main issue with a breakout game is you're very much locked to your breakout game most of the time. Not always. Um, but so as a content creator, finding like one game that does phenomenally well for you is actually kind of... Uh, it can be a good thing, but it can also be a bad thing. I've, I've met quite a number of creators over the years who are... I bet this is the, uh, the dash move to cross gaps. That's a nice animation. I like it. So we do the dash and then the boost. Makes sense. But yeah, breakout games are drugs. <laughs> it's, it's kind of a, a weird way of putting it, but yeah. Uh, oh, we might actually be able to go out to some other locations. Oh, and I can't do this. What if I do this one? Go up here. There we go. Um, but so when you get a breakout game on YouTube especially, you get a ton of views. But the problem is most games are not infinite. And so it becomes very difficult as a content creator to follow up on a breakout game success. Because, you know, baseline, you know, say your breakout game is Elden Ring. How do you continue to make Elden Ring... Uh, like, how do you keep your channel aloft with Elden Ring... Uh, for, you know, a long period of time. Well, the answer is simple. You just play a lot of Elden Ring. But that requires you to tie yourself to Elden Ring. Let's see, I do have two. Nope, can't get that. Fire range, movement speed. I don't really care about the rest of these. Oh, boost speed. You have one in boost speed. But yeah, branch into Elden Ring lore. Oh, wow. The upgrades here are no joke. But so yeah, there are ways that you can do it, but the problem is you're still stuck with it. You know, you really can just do Elden Ring for quite some time. Not everybody can iron pineapple their way into trying out other Souls-likes. Uh, and keep people's interest. Like, you can do Mata mod mod Week uh, and a bunch of other things. Like, I, I know you can do it. But the problem is you're still stuck with it. And from like a mental health perspective, uh, that can suck royally. Because I've been there. Uh, I, did, like, I didn't exactly do uh, 400 episodes of Scrap Mechanic because I wanted to. Uh, I enjoyed the game. And like, it was great for me and my channel and some other things. But there was a, a very baseline need to continue doing that so I could keep my uh, livelihood. Same thing with uh, Fallout. Never, le uh, never Leave the Vault. Great series. Really enjoyed it. But, uh, you know, there was kind of this, this clear moment where I was just like, I gotta stop doing these games, otherwise I'm gonna lose my mind. Yeah, because a lot of creators end up hating their breakout game. Yup. Uh, I know there's a lot of mine Minecraft creators that had that problem. There are a couple that, you know, are, are super chill with it, even years later. But that's often more the exception than the rule. Um, 
Let's see. Okay, I guess I haven't been over here yet. Ooh, hi. And so, I think I'm not looking for my breakout game, because I think a breakout game fundamentally is just going to destroy me. The Northern Lion with Binding of Isaac. I'm really curious about what he thinks for that. I think at this point, I don't want to say that he's like numb to Isaac at this point. I think it's just kind of like uh, showing up and just chatting. That he's put so many hours into that game that it is just fundamental autopilot for him. And if something changes, then he can get interested again, but otherwise he's just there. You know, imagine if you made french fries every day of your life, after a while you'd be able to make french fries without even realize you're realizing you were doing it, kind of like breathing. Watch one Minecraft channel that stopped doing games entirely for years because of the burnout. Yup. And it sucks too because like a lot of really creative people just get stuck in the churn. Um, so my solution lately has just been to play everything. Uh, not really everything, I'm trying to keep it within uh, a couple limited genres. Uh, and also just trying to key in on things that I know people are going to be interested in. So uh, I played Perfect Tower. Uh, yesterday, 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 and put out a video on it today. I'll probably put some more time into that. Same thing with like Realm Grinder and a couple other incremental games because I know people like those when I play them. Uh, same thing with tower defense games. Same thing with roguelikes. Same things with like weird sandbox games and some other stuff. Like there's there's things that are my breakout genre or genres. I just saw that video, which saw, shocked me because you have 400 hours in it already. Oof. Okay. Is this where we're going? I think so. Yeah. I think I might want to check this real quick. Aha. Music got really cool for a hot second there. There's some kind of secret bridge to the left. I will care more about that once, uh, once this game is out. At this point, I just wanted to go long enough that I could get, uh, you know, a decent, a decent video in. Okay, good. The boost works incredibly well for getting ar around enemies. I might want to invest a little bit further into movement speed. Or never mind. Boss got beaten hard. Movement speed. Let's, um, let's pull it out of, whoops. There we go. Yeah, I'm gonna move in into movement speed because this boss can't really handle me going really fast. Okay, I think I did need it in range though. Uh, let's see, what can we lose? Let's lose the boost speed. There we go. There we go, that's better. I love the fact that I can just change. On the fly. That opens me up so much. I can leave my bullets there for him to find. There we go. Please go down, sir. I if I can dodge over enemy bullets. I'm going to assume no. Ow. Well, I can dodge into enemy bullets. That's doable. I just got to make sure he doesn't corner me. There we go. Yeah, he's still taking damage. Perfect. Got him. No rule of three. Yeah, that was like, what, five or six phases? That was like five or six phases. Get some HP back and press to wishlist and follow. That's kind of fun. It does make the game freak out a little bit when I do that, so let's not do that. Anyway, this is a really neat little game. Uh, as far as like, uh, fusion of, I, I'm gonna say, it's more Zelda than Metroidvania, but the difference is often quite slim. Um, 
but for like an a neat take on the that formula and fusion of a couple other things bullet hell included it's solid i love the music i love the visuals it's very soft and easy on the eyes easy to tell where where things are i often play i i often don't play a whole lot of bullet hell games because i literally cannot see what's going on uh, but in this one, it is very clear and crisp the entire way through. And it I, legitimately looks quite nice. As somebody that, uh, that works in a very similar style, it's like, yeah. I didn't have to adjust the sound effects. Yeah, that's another one. The movement, too. Yeah, it feels really good. I can't wait for this one to come out. But for now, at least, uh, I guess we're going to move on to the next. I'm going to keep my eye on this one for sure. <laughs> 